Senate President David Williams uh, to the table to present Senate Concurrent Resolution 134. President Williams, welcome to the Senate State and Local Government Committee. Current resolution number 134 uh, is an exercise of the power of this General Assembly under Article 5 of the United States Constitution concerning the amendment of the Constitution. Uh, obviously, there are two uh, processes where the amendment can take place in Congress and the amendment, which will ultimately be submitted to the various state legislatures and the legislatures have to concur in the amendment. And the other process is we have a situation which has happened as we have now when the United States Congress refuses or has failed over a series of years <clears throat> to take that particular process. The various state legislatures can call uh, a constitutional convention for the purpose of proposing amendments which will then be submitted to the legislatures of the various states where three-fourths of the states will have to concur. Now, throughout the history of the United States, there have been other proposals to allow citizens to initiate amendments. One of them has been called just as historic backgrounds has been the Madison Amendment, where state legislatures could vote uh, themselves as the to submit to the various states uh, constitutional amendments. But this procedure has been used as far as calling for a convention on several occasions. There has never, Mr. Chairman, as you know, been a constitutional convention called. Process has always worked where if enough state legislatures came forward uh, to to indicate that it was the will of the people of various states to have this issue submitted, the United States uh, Congress has always capitulated and has acted and passed these constitutional amendments, submitted them uh, to the various legislatures. The proposal in front of us today is called the Federal Balance Budget Amendment to the United States Constitution. In drafting the words that we present in this resolution, we work with the offices of the various United States Senators' office, and we would like to give a special uh, kudos to the office of Senator Ron Hatch, who has been very helpful, Mr. Chairman, in drafting this. Of course, Senator Rand Paul has also been very helpful. This amendment will achieve a balanced budget uh, if passed by requiring outlays not to exceed revenue. By imposing a spending limit that allows growth based on the demographic that would be population or economic factors, including inflation or gross domestic product, and it would impose future debt or borrowing limits, prohibit new taxes uh, or, or increases in taxes without a two thirds majority or a super majority in the United States Congress. There are also uh, an op uh, optional subjects which include allowing for an exception war military conflict situation recognized by a resolution passed by both chambers of the United States Congress and signed by the President. So it would not be military police actions or those things that have to be a formal declaration uh, of war military conflict that was recognized by joint action and signed by the President. And this would also impose a prohibition of unfunded mandates to the state. <coughs> Mr. Chairman, you and members of this committee know that we have a continuing States of America, as far as unfunded mandates being imposed on the states with, without being fully funded, as far as the cost of these requirements. Each of these items is intended <coughs> to get federal spending in check, and the balance ultimately balances the budget. It aims to balance the budget by holding the line <coughs> on spending and not by raising taxes on the American people. This amendment provides a structural safeguard and firewall uh, that we believe fall in line with the requirements of the Constitution to protect and ultimately protect the interests of the people of the United States. We believe the action by this General Assembly will look forward and advance this proposal. We do not believe that, that a constitutional convention will ever be called. We believe that when enough states come forward and demand this action be taken and that this, uh, this measure be passed, that the United States uh, Congress will act. Pass an amendment uh, that will be submitted. 
submitted to the legislatures of various states. And this over the last election, the cycle indicated that no matter what area of the state, the uh, United States of America without limitation, that if there is a great demand for a restraint of the federal government to return to the concepts of federalism and to make sure that uh, the, the states are protected and that the people of the various states are protected against the exorbitant uh, national debt that's been raised by the federal government by the entry of this. Any questions for members of the committee? Any questions for members of the committee? <coughs> Very well then, uh, Senator Neal. I just want to uh, ask this question. Is your position that this is the only way that uh, duly elected representatives various districts across the United States can exercise their responsibility in making judgments that restrain and or uh, promote the distribution of funds where necessary, that they're not capable of doing that? Is that what we're saying here? I don't understand the question. Again. Are you saying that those people who are elected to do their jobs? I understand. About three tries, we'll get it done. <laughs> This is my second. Those people who are elected, are you saying that those people who are elected are not capable of restraining the budget when necessary and are promoting the distribution of funds when necessary? That they do not have this capacity. Is that what? Is that the reason? Exactly. I can assert that I do not believe that they are capable of doing that. It does not appear that they're capable of doing that without this structural safeguard. I would agree with that. Okay, so. I you and I are in accord on that. No, I'm not in a. I'm in a car with just about 10% of what you do, and I appreciate uh, about 30% of what you do, and the rest of it I respect. But what I'm saying is, I love that stick, my good friend. I think you're having a great day so far, Mr. President. Well, that's all of my perspective. Isn't it? Let, let, let me let me say what I'm trying to get at is that the reason why we're here, uh, if I may, Mr. Chairman. Yes, please proceed. The reason we're here, uh, actually there's a number of reasons that we're here, but at least one reason that we're here is because of the belief that you just expressed. Because it takes a certain number of states to use this particular method in trying to get to the objective that you think uh, we should be getting to. I guess my, my concern is, is that I think everybody recognizes that there should be, uh, at this point, some restraints from the president on down. I don't think anybody disagrees with that. I think the question is how you go about doing it. And I think that's very important. So what I'm really concerned about, uh, Senator Williams, is that uh, it's my understanding that if you proceed along this particular methodology, that if you're successful, that this would open up this whole thing beyond any single issue. Now, I could be wrong, but I've been doing quite a bit of research on this, and I just can't find where the necessary restraints are the uh, probable judicial review that would keep the proper restraints on keeping this beyond a single issue. If you have some information or knowledge with respect to that to share with us, I appreciate it. Well, I do have some information and knowledge about that. And uh, Senator Neal, I would tell you that this is not my idea of how you do it. It's what the framers of the Constitution provided. Uh, and and uh, the framers of the Constitution very wisely figured out that ultimately if there was a concentration of power in the central government, that that government would not want to give that power up. And the sovereignty of the very states, the various states would be at risk if there was not some process that the various states could not submit directly to the people in the 